And I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hello and welcome. My name is Paul Grogan, and today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of Monumental, uh, which is going live on Kickstarter literally right now, I think. I don't even have the Kickstarter link to it. Um, so yeah, hello to everybody who is watching live. Now, a couple of caveats before we start. I've been having some major software issues in the last week, and today I've just updated the software, and the YouTube live chat is not working. So bear with us a minute. I just need to click on a couple of little things, and then it should start working. So bear with us a minute. This won't take long to get up and running. Um, here we go. Right, we're just logging in now. And this should make the chat appear on screen. Yeah, they've basically sent me a new trial version of the software to stop the crashes that I was getting. Um, so I'm going to see if that uh, if that works. Um, yeah, if you're if, if you're able to post a link to the Kickstarter uh, in there, then that would be great because uh, I don't have that right now and we can follow along with how well it's doing. Um, so Monumental, for those who don't know, is it's a game that already was on Kickstarter and has funded and has been successful and has been delivered. But they're going back to Kickstarter because they're doing uh, a new edition. They're going to be doing, well, it's not really a new edition. They're going to be doing an expansion set for it. So back to Kickstarter, they're doing an expansion for it. Today, I'm going to be showing you the base game. And unfortunately, uh, this plugin system isn't working. So it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get the chat on screen, unfortunately. It does mean we have the uh, the dirty black box there, but I'm going to hide that. So unfortunately, no chat on screen because that's not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that, get rid of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really want to go back to the other software because that was crashing. <laughs> it crashed three times this afternoon while I was uh, while I was doing a test stream. So I don't really want to do that if I can help it. Let's get rid of the YouTube chat. It does mean you're going to see more of the uh, the table than you're used to. Uh, if we can hide it, is it going to hide? There you go. It's going to hide. Right. OK, so there you go. We've got a little bit, a little bit more of the table. Uh, we could probably zoom in a little bit more. Now, that does mean that I'm not going to be able to see the chat, but I am going to um, I'll, I'll open that on another window. So first first thing is, if the software crashes, stick with it because I should see the software crashing. Uh, and I will basically relaunch and we'll carry on from where we left off. So if all of a sudden everything goes quiet and you stop seeing things, let's move myself over. There you go. Uh, then don't worry, I will be back. Uh, that's the first thing. Now, let's just get this up on another screen. There you go. So I can see the chat. Uh, so yeah, a few people are here in the chat. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining me. Bruce is here. Peter's here. Let's just make sure that it is still going out and I'm not talking to nobody. Um, yeah. KS, the Kickstarter says still coming soon. Right, okay. So there we go. We are going out live. So yeah, Monumental. I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough today. I am going to be playing um, the Egyptians. So my uh, my leader is Ramesses II. Uh, good old Ramesses. Uh, and we're going against the, the Greek. So the copy of the game I've got, I have the deluxe copy of the game. So it has all of these nice miniatures in there. Um, and there are five different factions, races included in the game, and you can play any of them against any of them, and they all have a slightly different way of working. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be playing the Egyptians. I have my starting deck of 15 cards. The starting deck is generally made up of um, a set of standard cards, but also a couple of unique ones um, associated with your particular um, race. Is it called a race? I want to say, ow! There's another thing I'm going to mention in a minute as well. Um, civilization. Yeah, that's it. Civilization, not faction, not race. So the other thing uh, I'm going to mention is I've actually pulled a muscle in my right arm. So I'm in quite a bit of pain. If I occasionally shout ow, uh, then that's what that is. And I'm going to have difficulty reaching over to a couple of parts of the board. Just wanted to say that now, not after any sympathy. Uh, I'm just I'm just letting you know. We're also setting up, uh, there's a number of scenarios that's included in the game, a number of predefined maps, and we're going to be using this one. It's the Plain and Simple, or Plain Simple, uh, it, which is a two-player map, which is what we're going to be doing today. There are multiple scenarios in here, or just map setups, really. And there are rules in the rulebook about creating your own map, but we're going to go with that one. Uh, now, Kickstarter is going live at 6 p.m. CEST. Yes, so I was having... Um, I've had a couple of discussions with uh, with Funforge this week um, because there was there was some confusion over the time zone uh, because there's a difference between CET and CEST. But anyway, they have asked me 
to go live at five o'clock uh, UK time, which is which is what I've done now. They said that this was going to be the same time as the Kickstarter goes live. Um, if it isn't and it's going live in an hour, um, <laughs> then uh, yeah, okay. Um, it's not a problem. You can watch this for an hour and then and then go and check it out. So anyway, that's the map we're using. I've mentioned that I'm using the Egyptians. I've mentioned that I'm playing against the Greeks. And the objective of this game, for those who don't know, I'm going to be doing a tutorial really. So for those people who don't know anything about the game, um, you're trying to get victory points. And there is a deck here. This is a deck of development cards. This is really weird watching the YouTube feed and not my own feed. I'll watch my own feed for a bit. So um, there's a deck of development cards here, which is age one, age two, and then age three. There is also optionally coming with the game, there is an extra deck of Renaissance cards. So if you want to make the game longer, you can. And there's an extra set of Renaissance cards that you actually put in between ages two and three. We're not going to be doing that today. We're just going to be playing the standard version of the game. When this deck runs out, you finish that round and play one more round, and then the game is over and you count up the points. You will get points for, uh, now let's see if my zooming in is working. Yes, it is just, except the YouTube chat appears. So I just need to get rid of that on this preset. There was a minute. There you go. And it's slightly off to one side. Um, overhead cam, move over. There you go. Right, so this is how you win. At the end of the game, two points for every wonder card, every wonder that I've managed to build, two points for each cultural policy, one point per knowledge card, and one for each owned province on the board. These are all the provinces. And for each of these areas, there is a majority bonus for the player or players who've got the most in that area. You add up the points and the player with the most points um, wins the game, basically, that's how it is. So let's go back to the full overhead view. Um, and we're gonna do the rest of the setup. So I haven't done all of the setup. I wanted to show you um, how that works. This is my deck. This is my 15 card deck, okay? So this gets shuffled. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build my starting city. And this is what each player does. Obviously, I'm playing solo. The AI player doesn't have a city, only me. So I'm going to have to just switch over to that view just so I can see where my cards are going to go. And this is basically a three by three grid. OK, and this is quite a cool mechanism for selecting what actions you're going to be able to do in that particular round. And there's a deck building part of this game as well, because you you will add cards to this deck as the game goes on. So here we go. I'm hoping I get a knowledge card. I didn't. OK, I would have shown you what would have happened if I'd have got a knowledge card. Um, and if we just zoom in, is that right? Yeah, it's kind of right. Probably need to just move that up a little bit. Uh, there we go. OK, so I've zoomed in a little bit too much with that but they are my nine starting uh, city cards okay um the next thing that i need to do for the setup is we need to get the ai player going so the ai player has uh, a set of ai action card and one of them is specific to their civilization okay so they're going to get shuffled um i say the ai it's actually the automa which is a commonly used name uh, for these kind of solo opponents and then we have this deck now I must be very very careful because I love shuffling and I've got to be very very careful that I do not shuffle this deck <laughs> because this is the age ones then the age twos then the age threes now they were shuffled within that but that is the deck now what we're then going to do is we're going to build the display now the display is normally six cars in a line but in a two-player game which is where we are now we actually deal two three card rows so there's the first one and there is the second one okay so they were just randomly shuffled and let's have a quick look at them we might have to zoom around a bit yeah so they are the cards in the display we have these blue ones these are technology cards these white ones are wonders uh, and this is a building card okay and you can see on them there is a number one uh, you can just about see probably that tells you which part of the deck it's in that is the display um, and I think that is probably it for setup. I think so. Um, considering the size of Paul Head's head, his hands are very big. Yes, because you're seeing you're seeing that as well as this. Right, we're going to start. So basically what happens is each player is going to take a turn, starting with the first player, which when you're playing solo is me. Um, and on your turn, you basically do four phases. The first phase is you activate your city. So let's just have a closer look at my city. 
So here we go. Here are the nine cards that make up my city. I'm just going to make this a little bit. No, I'm not. If, I'm, if I try and make it smaller, I'm going to mess it up. Oh, and I've moved across. Yeah, because I've moved myself across on one preset, but not the other one. There you go. Let's move myself across again. So these are the nine cards in my city. Basically, what you do is you can choose to activate one row and one column. And then you basically you, you then activate all of the cards in that column and in that row. Now, these cards are relatively simple um, in what they do. This card here, the work camp, for example, when I activate that, that is going to generate me one production, which I will use to build things. The fort is going to generate me one military, which I will use to move my units around. And the library generates me one science. So that's the basic effect of these cards. But some of them have other things on them as well. Um, and yeah, I, you choose one column and one row and you activate all of the cards uh, accordingly. I'm just going to fiddle with the colours a little bit because it looks a little bit washed out on my screen. I don't know how it is on your screen, but it definitely looks a little bit washed out. How's that? Looks a bit better. It's a bit more colourful. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to have a look at these cards and based on what we've got here, so I could activate this and then I'd get to do that and that, but I wouldn't get to do that because that wouldn't give me two production. Um, oh, you start with two gold as well. Each player starts with two gold, including the automat. Um, okay, so we could do that and that, and then I would get the three production and I'd get the gold. Gold is a wild card for any of the basic resources. Um, or we could go down the military route and we could do that and that and that would get me three military. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that because of what we've got here. So once you've chosen uh, which row and column you want to do, you basically, you slightly angle the cards like so, okay, to show that you've activated them and then you gain the resources printed on them. So I basically get two production, so that's these two things, so I'll have them, and I get three military. One, two, three. Okay, so they are basic resources, okay? Let's zoom back out. Now, basic resources, if you don't spend them on your turn, you lose them. Gold, you keep. There are other things you keep as well, but basically these plastic counters here, if you don't use these on your turn, you can't save them, they disappear. Right, that's phase one done, which activating city. Phase two is actions. And what I can do is I can do, there's a whole host of different actions that you can do in the game. You can do as many of them as you want, in any order that you want, and you can repeat each action multiple times, as long as you have the resources to do so. Now, some of the actions you find on cards, and I don't have any actions on the cards that I activated, so we can forget that. The first action I'm going to explain is uh, conquering one of these provinces. So you can see here, these are the provinces on the board, and the amount of military required to conquer the provinces is a combination of the terrain value, so that's the terrain defense value and the strength of the barbarians in it. So to conquer this province here, I would need two strength. This one is also two. There's only one barbarian in there, but there is a terrain value of one. So this costs two, this costs two, this costs two. This will cost four. This is actually different. So this is actually, you, you need two terrain, two strength points to go in there. So you need two units to attack, but you also need three coins because this is what's called a, uh, a free town. I think it's Freetown. Let's just make sure I get my terminology correct. Yes, it's a Freetown province. So as well as the defense value of the terrain, you have to actually also pay, in this case, uh, three gold. Um, they did get the time right. It's now 6.15 CEST. Yes, I thought so. So the Kickstarter should be live now. <laughs> Again, if it has gone live, please post a link in the, in, in the, uh, uh, in, in the comments. If it hasn't gone live now, then they've, they've got their times wrong. Because as I say, CET is different from CEST, as I found out this week. Anyway, so we're going we're gonna to go some conquering. And what we're going to do is we're going to spend two military. So we basically spend it, okay, and we put it back in there. Okay, the link is in the show notes. That's good. Uh, it's still showing us coming soon. Maybe they're, they're having technical issues like I had. So we spent two military. And that means I can now move two units, uh, which is what's required to conquer each one of these. So I don't think it's going to matter too much, but we're going to go for this one up here. 
Okay, so we're going to move Ramses the second. He counts as one, and we're going to move one of these Medjays, which is like an Egyptian warrior type person. So there you go. So I moved two units, which I which I did because I spent two military, and that's what's needed to conquer the territory. So basically, I, I that, that province. So I conquer that province, and I get this token. So this is the barbarian token, and I flip it over and I reveal it, and I can neither take a gold or move each explorer one tile. So that's a choice that I make now, immediately. Either I get a gold or I move each explorer one tile. Now, I was actually planning on moving on, on using this military to move another explorer. That's what I was planning to do. So this is this is interesting. Um, but if I take the gold, hmm. Okay, no, I'm actually going to move each explorer one tile. So these are my explorers, okay, as well as your military units. Uh, it's open now. The Kickstarter has gone live now. Excellent. Uh, hello to everybody who has joined the Kickstarter and has now come to watch my video. Um, <clears throat> as well as the military units here, you have two explorers. Explorers will go around the map and do some trading and collect these resources and, and everything else. They're not combat units. They can't be attacked, but they don't have to fight the barbarians. So I get to move each explorer one tile. We're going to move that one there and we're going to move this one here. OK, right. That's that tile done. Now, you do keep this tile because uh, the pyramids gives you an ability to use it again. But that tile is done. I've resolved it. Now, Ramses II has an ability. The first time Ramses conquers a province, each turn gain two production. There you go, which is why I did it. So I now have four production. Remember, you've got to spend this on your turn, otherwise it's lost. So let's look at what we can build. There's a couple of things we can build. First of all, there are these standard building cards, OK? You can buy these for the cost printed on them, which is three, two or two. Uh, and those will go on top of your deck. Now, you'll see why that's important in a minute. The other thing is you can build from the display here. So let's just have a closer up look at the display and see what we've got in there. Uh, where is it? There it is. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set a preset for this. So preset number three, OK, should be the display here. So I can take any of these cards from the display. Um, these cost science to take, so I can't take them, but these all cost um, production to take. And the buildings, you pay the cost that's shown, in this case four, and that card will go on top of the deck. Or I can start building one of these wonders. Now, wonders have to be built in two stages. Um, so I'd take it first and I'd place it. Um, now I've got four. I have four production. I don't want to waste any, but I would also like to start building a wonder because wonders are worth extra cards at the end. So I might end up having to waste one, uh, which is a shame, but that's sometimes how it goes. No, I think we'll be all right because there is something I haven't done yet, which I'm about to do that's going to get me... Oh, no, I'm... Yeah, OK, right. No, we're going to spend four. So we'll zoom back out. I'm going to spend these four production here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to take the apothecary, OK? So we're going to take the apothecary. And what happens is you take the card and you put it on top of your deck. OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate these explorers. But first, I'm going to use this one military point here. Because for one military point, you can you can move units like I did and conquer, or you can move your explorers around. Now, I am just going to check the rules on explorers and free trading things. I think... Yeah, I don't think they trade with the city. I think you have to conquer the city to get that. Um, yeah, I think explorers, you just get the production token. Let me just check that. I want to make sure I get the rules right. But I think that is right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Thing is, I played this a couple of hours ago and I remembered it then. <laughs> uh, and now I've forgotten. Yes. If your explorer is a market, you take the market tokens. Oh, no, you do. You trade with the market. Yeah, you trade with the market. Right. OK, so, um, yeah, so let's just check the setup. Should that be there? Ah, that's why I got the board set up wrong. There should not be a production token in the trading places. Right. OK, that's what confused me. Apologies for that. There should not be a trading token there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spend this one military point here. Get that off camera. 
Okay, and that is going to allow me to move this explorer into here. Okay. Um, you can also grab the market tiles and choose one. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was just checking. Thank you very much. Um, now, your explorers, you can move them as much as you want on your turn, which you've seen. But there is one thing that each of them can only do once, which is to pick up uh, the token from where they are. So this explorer here is in this area. It can pick up this token. Now, this token is a production token. So it's a black token, but I don't have to discard it at the end of the round, at the end of my turn. So that stays with me. OK, um, this one here, I can basically look through these. So we've chosen Rome. It's a marketplace. There are multiple tiles, shuffle them together, pick two at random because it's a two player game. I can look through these and I can either get, wow, I get four production or four science. Now, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take the four science. Okay, so this one goes back and you can only have one token from each of those cities. So I have taken the token from Rome. I have traded with Rome. Rome has given me four science. I can't trade with Rome again. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. Um, so I've got more stuff to spend. Now, I was going to build a wonder, but actually, I'm thinking now that I won't. I mean, I quite like the Hanging Gardens because it gives me culture, but I'm going to save that and I'm going to save the gold. So yeah, gold is a wild card. You can use it as either science or military or production, but I'm going to keep it for now. I do have four science, however, so that four science is getting spent and we're going to buy the wheel. Okay, so that's a technology card. Oh, sorry, a knowledge card. That goes on top of my deck. And I think my go is done. Yes, I think I've done everything. Okay, so what happens now is phase three, all of the cards that I activated, they get discarded, and then we replenish our city, starting with the top left, with cards from the top of our deck. Remember, we know what these are because we put them there. So the first card goes here. Now, this is a knowledge card. Whenever you get a knowledge card, you deal another one on top of it, okay? And then when you activate it, you basically activate both of those cards together. So knowledge cards are very cool. And then we fill this slot and it's another knowledge card that goes there and then that goes there right okay so there you go there is our city uh if your deck ever runs out you shuffle your discards build another deck and you go again so yes it is deck building uh if you like deck building games then um yeah it's got deck building in it right okay software hasn't crashed yet which is good <laughs> we're doing okay um then we replenish the display. Okay, so what happens here? Let's zoom in. There we go. If a card was taken from the row, then everything that's left slides to the right to fill any gaps, and then you replenish it. If a card wasn't taken from the row, you remove the furthest card that, from out the game, and then you slide down. So there will always be a cycle round. So because I took a card from each row, we cycle both down and we get mathematics and uh, the warrior priest altar okay and then that is my go done so they're the four phases of the turn activate the city do actions re replenish the city and refill the display okay now it is over to uh the greeks turn and what we do is we have the deck of ai cards which i think i've already shuffled earlier on and we deal two of them okay now these action cards have a top part and a bottom part you always do the top part and then you do the bottom part if, and it says on this one, if architectural, and this one, if economic. Each of the uh, civilizations has a particular sort of trait. Uh, the Greeks are economic, so it's gonna do the bottom of this as well as the top. I think it's as well as the top. Let me know in the chat. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the top and the bottom. Um, Mohammed is saying you can also grab the market tiles and, oh yeah, that was from earlier on. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, if you're watching this in the chat, Please help me keep the chat active and busy. Say hello to each other. Um, and yeah, keep it open. And let me know how the Kickstarter's going. And go on the Kickstarter if you backed it and tell everybody to come here and watch this video. Right, first of all, move both explorers one space each, taking all production and market tokens, and then if possible, pay two gold to repeat this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the Greeks are gonna move 
they're explorers. And as long as there are still market tokens left, no, that's not. Where is there? They move towards the nearest market token. OK. Um, once the market tokens have gone, they move elsewhere. But for now, because there's market tokens left, they move towards the market tokens. So they've both moved one space each. They take the production tokens. OK, now, whenever uh, whenever the Greeks have or sorry, whenever the Automa has two production tokens, you trade them in and you get a gold. OK, then, if possible, pay two gold. Yep, yeah, we have two gold um, to repeat. So what it does is it goes here and it goes here. <clears throat> and then it's going to take the market tokens. So it's going to take this one and this one. Now, for these, you reveal them and it just gets gold equal to the value that's shown on there. So it's basically going to get eight gold. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have my experience of playing this game solo. The, uh, the Automa does get a lot of gold, but it will spend a lot of gold. OK, that's its first action done. Um, it doesn't do the bottom bit because it's not architectural. And then we do the top part of this. Oh, it's moved both explorers one space each again. OK, so it's doing a lot of exploring, um, taking all production and market tokens, and if possible, pay two gold to repeat it. OK, so it's doing exactly the same again. Uh, interesting. Now, it can't have multiple tokens, multiple market tokens from the same uh, marketplace. So it's basically going to treat them as, as they don't exist. It's now going to go for the nearest production token. And there's quite a few that are the nearest. So I think I think it's down to me. I think the rules were slightly ambiguous on this part. Uh, hopefully they'll fix them for the second edition of what the explorers do once the market tokens have gone. But I think it's going to try and um, yeah get as many as it can. Now, what's that going to be? Is it going to be able to get these? I think it might. So this one's going to move there. This one's going to move there and it takes this one uh, and then pay two gold to repeat it. Oh, there's something else I missed on this card. I'll come back to it in a minute. I just noticed. So it's going to repeat it. So that's going to go there. Uh, that's going to go there. And then that's going to take that one. And again, it's got two production tokens. So it trades them in for a gold. Uh, if anybody in the chat, uh, they can go back to the to take the other. Explorers move back to the city once they have one of each market. Oh, I missed that. Thank you very much. I did miss that in the rules. Where is that? Solo rules. Uh, moving explorers. Uh, oh yeah, whenever Automa has a market token from all markets on the board, immediately discard all of the market tokens, return both... Right, okay, so forget that. <laughs> it didn't do that. Let's take the gold back. Let's put that back on there. Let's put that back on there. Let's put that back on there, that back on there. Right, so when it has one of each, they go back here. We discard them so it can go again. And now it's doing that. So it does move one to there and then one to there and this one will just go one to there and one to there there you go so i think we got it right now and it takes this which is two so it gets two gold okay right i think we're good so that's all of the market tokens now gone thank you very much for that um now the thing i forgot to do is on both of these it says take the lowest cost building so we need to look at the marketplace which is here uh we'll look for the building which is this one and there is only one building in there, so it takes that. Now, it doesn't actually have a city. You just take it, you put it over there, and that'll be worth points for it at the end of the game. There you go. Um, and this one would take the lowest cost building as well, but there isn't one. And then, if economic, move both explorers three spaces, taking all production and market tokens. Shuffle the Automa's discard pile into the deck, including this card. Wow. So it's basically going to move three and try and get as many as it can. So it's probably going to go one, two, three, and take those two. And then it's going to go one, two, three, and take those two. OK. Which it now gets rid of those four and takes two gold. I think that's right. So yeah, it's, it's done a lot of exploring. Just because of the, uh, the random order in which the cards came out, our Automa has been exploring like a beast right from the start of the game. Okay, right. Uh, and then it says, 
shuffle the Ultimus discard pile into the deck. Okay, which is interesting because both of those cards are explore cards. <laughs> now I was playing this afternoon and Matthew Dunstan, the designer, said um, make sure you don't have any of the advanced cards in the deck. And I don't think I have the advanced cards in the deck. I couldn't tell the difference between the advanced ones and the basic ones. They've all got the same icon in the top right. So I think we're right. Apologies if it's wrong, but there we go. Right. There we go. That's done. That's there. That is, I believe, the end of the Autumn's turn. But then we do, we do the display. So a card was taken from the bottom row. So nothing changes there. But a card was not taken from the top row. So that disappears. Then we slide everything down and we get some new cards. So we have weapon making and we have sailing. There you go. That is the end of the first round of the game. And now we move to round two. So it's back to me, and the first thing I'm going to do is activate my city. Right, let's have a look at what we've got here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on my city. There you go, there is my city. You can just about see what I've got. Um, now, as I said earlier on, when I activate this, I actually get both of them. So this, this is actually quite good. If I was to activate these two cards, I would get some extra stuff. Um, and I could activate the mine at the bottom and then that would get me a gold. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to choose this leftmost column here. I'm going to activate all of those cards. Um, okay, and let's get some resources. So that doesn't generate any, this does. So I basically get two production and that's it. That's all I get. However, now when we go to the action phase, I can activate all of these cards. So I activate the mine. If you gained at least two production this turn, gain a gold. I did. Huzzah. Um, I can activate the forum, archive a card, or pay two different basic resources to gain a culture. Now, culture is really, really useful. Uh, archiving a card means remove it from the game. <clears throat> so like a lot of deck building games, you can thin your deck by getting rid of some of the cards you don't want and that's in this game that's archiving we also have the apothecary which also says archive a card to gain two matching basic resources we're definitely doing that but what resources do i want do i need military um i mean yes i need military because military with ramses the second is going to get me production how many military do we need we probably need two or four. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to activate the Apothecary. We're going to archive away the Pharaoh's Barge because the Pharaoh's Barge is my special card that I have in my deck. When you archive this card, build a wonder section for free. So that's archived. That's gone out of the game. Um, and building a wonder section basically means um, I can take one of these. So I can take the Great Library or I can take Stonehenge. Um, I'm going to take Stonehenge. So we're going to start building Stonehenge. So this goes here and it goes, we put one of these tokens on it to show that I've started building it. Three production and I will finish it. Um, and then I get all sorts of abilities and it actually goes in the deck as a card as well. So we archived a card to gain two basic matching resources and we're going to gain two military. Now then. And we're also going to archive a card with the forum and we're going to archive away we're going to archive away the work camp okay you can only archive a card that you did not activate this turn okay right done that done that we've done that right i've got these as well copy the effect of the attached card the wheel cannot be copied by another card Oh, right. OK, so the wheel activates the apothecary again. OK, so I'm going to activate a card and we are going to take two more military. OK. Because of where. Where I want to go with these explorers. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we want to do. We'll take the military. Uh, and this is pay two basic resources to gain a gold. Do I want to do that? 
I don't think I do, actually. Or do I? Hmm. Okay, yeah, we're going to do that. We are going to pay two, two basic resources to gain a gold. We're going to pay one of each, if I've added it up correctly. If not, I'll undo. Um, so we've activated all of our cards. We've used all of those actions. I am then going to spend... two military to go into here. Now, you can't leave an area unoccupied. That is mine now. That is a conquered province. So I've got to stay that there. But Ramesses can go wandering here. And you always take one from the city as well. Um, so, yeah. So I spent two, moved two units. That's the required military strength. That's it. We're done. And we have conquered these barbarians, which is one gold or archive two cards. Well, ah, uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to take a gold. I'd love to archive cards, but I can only archive that one. So, uh, did I get the resources from the mine? I don't know. I think I did. I think I took a gold from the mine. Let me know if I didn't. Somebody zoom back. Um, yeah, I, I think I took the gold from the mine, but somebody let me know if I, if I missed it. Right, so I've done that. Um, we've conquered this province. And that gets me two production because of Ramesses. And then I'm going to use these three production to finish building Stonehenge. So when you finish building a wonder, it has an ability on it. It says, when built, gain. So I had actually forgotten about that, but I gained two of these. Um, and then the card goes on top of my deck and it's going to come out. The other thing that happens is whenever you build a wonder, you take one of these cardboard tokens, which is off screen. Where is it? There we go. So this is Stonehenge. And I basically choose a province that I control and I can build it in there. And what it does is it adds to the defense strength. Now in a multiplayer game, this would be great. But in a solo game, uh, the auto generally, I mean, it always goes for the weakest area. Um, so, uh, but it doesn't require any strength to defeat. So if, you, if your area is right next to it and it's the weakest and it's like six strength, or six defense, it doesn't matter, Could, might as well just be one. But I'm gonna put Stonehenge here. So that's increased the defense value of that area by two. Um, has anybody found whether I took the gold from the mine or not yet? <laughs> yeah, let me know. Right, so I've got these two resources that I'd forgotten I was gonna get. And we can now start building another wonder. So I think we might do that. So I'm gonna spend these two resources and the resource token to start building the great library. You can only ever have one wonder under construction at any time. Um, you can take a new one, but um, then you have to, you know, scrap the first one. So we've started building that. I might just keep these tokens near me actually. Save me reaching across. Right, that's that done. We've started building that. Now then. Uh, how is the Kickstarter going? Somebody give me an update on how the Kickstarter is going. Um, yeah. Um, and let's see if we can get some backers from the Kickstarter. If people want to post the link in the comments, if you are a backer, um, then yeah, drag them over here, get them to get them to join in. So we started building the library. We've got one military resource left. We were going to use this to move one of these explorers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move this explorer here, back here, and we're going to take this production icon, production token. Right, I think we're done. So we now discard all of this. Okay, leaving one measly card there. And then we're going to start dealing out, refreshing my city. So one, two, and then we shuffle our deck. Uh, John says you've just backed all in and enjoying the playthrough. Thank you very much, John, for joining in. Uh, hopefully this will, I mean, are you planning on playing it solo or multiplayer? Let me know. Okay, I definitely want to play this multiplayer as soon as we're able to. I don't know if this is on um, Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. I'm not sure. I might actually be playing multiplayer this weekend. I was talking about it with Jeremy Howard. We might be able to make it happen. We might not because we've got a lot of other stuff on this weekend as well. 
Uh, right, so they are my new cards. Oh, I'll tell you what, I've done it wrong. Masonry should have added what was still there. Library was still there. Yeah, I did it on autopilot. So on Masonry should have added that and then that, but you can't have two knowledge cards on the same card. I think you discard the first one. Now, this didn't happen to me this afternoon, so I'm just going to do it now. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Replenish city. If you do like a knowledge card, deal a second one. If you do like multiple knowledge ones, choose one of the knowledge cards to keep and discard the other ones. I'm going to take the wheel. So that goes on there, which means that goes there. That gets discarded. Yeah. So just a reminder, every time you deal a knowledge card, you deal a building on top of it. Uh, or you deal another card on top of it. If that's a knowledge card, you choose one to keep. So there we go. Um, right. Are we good to go? I think we are good to go. Now we replenish the display. So no cards were taken from this row. So we have to get rid of irrigation. Nobody wants irrigation. These slide down and we get some new ones. So again, we're still in era one. There is a card in here, which will tell us when we switch to era two. Okay, now it is the Autumn's turn. Let's see if he's gonna go exploring again. <laughs> Okay, so there are the two cards. So the first one is, it's going to complete a wonder or it's going to acquire a new wonder uh, with the lowest cost. Well, there is only one wonder in the offer. So that's the one that it's going to acquire. Um, so it takes that and we'll put a little counter on it. But then if possible, pay two gold to repeat this. Yeah, so it does. So it pays two gold, it repeats it. It's built the Colossus of Rhodes. It just goes over there. It will count for end game scoring, but we do. We do give it a little tile. Now this can go on any province that it controls. There isn't one, so it actually goes into the capital. There you go. OK. Uh, if economic, which it is, move both explorers two spaces, taking all production and market tokens. Well, they can. Yeah, so this is this is it now. All of the exploration, all of the production tokens have gone because that moves one two, taking those two, which convert into a gold, and that one moves there. So that is pretty much it for the explorers. Everything has gone, everywhere has been explored. Oh, and it's got these two as well. Um, so whenever the explorers will get to activate next, they just take two gold instead, which is here. <laughs> oh, hang on, take the lowest cost building. I forgot to do that. Uh, which is, these two are lowest cost, so it takes the one furthest away. So that's that one. And then this one, move both explorers, one space, etc., etc., etc. There's nothing to take. Unless I've missed anything, there is nothing to take. So it just takes two gold instead. And then it takes the next lowest cost building. Uh, and that's it. Right, there you go. So that's the AI done. Uh, then we do, we do the display. So cards were taken, so we just refill. Okay, pyramids, temple, and the Great Wall. How are we doing in the chat? 52,000 euros. Nice. 47,000 pound, 489 backers. Good, glad it's going well. Um, I mean, I first heard about this game because I, I know Matthew Dunstan, the designer, uh, and I first saw him doing demos of this game. Um, and it looked like my kind of game because I like civilization games anyway. And I hadn't realized that it was gonna have miniatures in. Now the miniatures are the deluxe version. You do not need the miniatures but they look really, really nice. And when the box arrived with all the miniatures and I was like, oh, wow. Um, and I'm on a painting spree at the moment. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to paint these, but <laughs> I'd like to. They do look really nice. Anyway, that's the AI's turn. It's back to me. We are activating cities time. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Well, the wheel's quite nice because it duplicates that. If we activate Stonehenge, it allowed us to build a wonder section paying two fewer production. If you do gain one culture, oh, well, we've got to do that. Now that doesn't tie up, unfortunately, with anything else that I want to do, but that is pretty awesome. So, hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to activate, oh, now do I activate across the top or down here? Oh, I could actually activate that and that. Oh, 
Oof. But the forum allows us to archive a card. We do like archiving cards. But I do want to use the wheel. OK, so I'm going to activate. It's an interesting choice on which one to activate. And it gets more interesting as you get more cards out. OK, so that's what we're going to activate. That gets us two production, two military, and a science. But one science, two military, two production. OK, so I've, I've used the wheel. The wheel has been used. Um, right, now we're going to activate Stonehenge. Build a wonder section, paying two fewer production, if you do gain one culture. So I can complete the Great Library with only one production. And if I do, I gain a culture. So a culture token is one of these tokens. These can be kept from one round to the next. Uh, and I'll come on to what they do in a second. The Great Library is finished, so when it's built, I gain two science. And then that card goes on top of my deck. I now have three science. I could use that to buy weapon making or mathematics. Or I could throw in a gold to make it to make sailing. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll come back to that. So we've used Stonehenge. We've used the wheel. Uh, archiving a card is nice, but you need to replace them with better production or you end up with no production. That's what happened in my game this afternoon, but I still won. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I replaced all of my production cards with fancy stuff and then ended up with almost no production. Um, but I still did OK. Is two military going to be enough? Two military is enough to conquer this. So I think let's do that. Yeah, let's get the cheap ones first. So two military conquers this. OK. And we've got, oh, one gold or archive a card. I think I'm going to archive a card. I'm going to archive the library. OK, so that's gone. OK, uh, and then that was Ramesses' first conquering of a province. So I get two resources. So I've got three resources plus one from this. I've got three science. So we're doing okay. We could buy a temple. Now the temple generates culture. Or we could build another wonder. Hmm. Pyramids or Great Wall? I think Great Wall. And we'll buy the temple next time round. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to use these three resources here. One, two, three. Uh, to start building the Great Wall. There you go. Um, and I've got three science, which I'm going to use to buy mathematics. So that goes on top of my deck. OK. And then the culture token. So what does culture to what do culture tokens do? Right. So each of the civilizations has a deck of five uh, culture cards or whatever they're called. Cultural policy cards. You will play these during the game and you can play them in any order. Your first one that you play will cost you one culture. The second one will cost you two. The third one will cost you three, etc., etc. Each one that you play is worth two points at the end of the game. And then there's three point bonus for who played the most. So I am actually going to play one of these. It's going to cost me that one culture. Uh, and what, which one am I going to play? That is the question. I think I'm going to play expedited construction. OK, now that's going to allow me to have. So first of all, it has a coming into play ability of gain to production. OK. It then has a permanent ability as long as it is the most recent cultural policy, which is you may build two wonders at the same time. The first section of each wonder you build costs the first section of each wonder you build each turn costs one fewer resource. So I'm actually going to use that to start building the pyramids with these two resources. There you go. Awesome. So we're building the pyramids and the Great Wall. I'm actually just going to stack these up to save a bit of space. Um, yeah, we're good. And that's a permanent thing. That stays there. That's not in my city. I don't have to activate it. It's just always there. Uh, did you use Stonehenge's ability? Yes, I did. I used Stonehenge's ability um, to start building the Great Wall. Did I? Oh, you're making me, you're making me doubt myself now. 
Let me know in the chat. Did I use Stonehenge's ability to start building the Great Wall? I think I did because that's what got me the culture, which is what I've just done. Yeah, I don't think I have any other way. You're making me question myself, Mo. <laughs> you paid the resources to start the building. What, the Great Wall? So where did I get the culture from? Yeah, where, where did I get the culture from with which I've just used my cultural policy? Hmm. Yeah, apparently I paid to start building it. So yeah, I'm not sure where I got the culture from. Um, if I got it from somewhere else, I've forgotten where I got it from. Did I get it from one of these? Nope, didn't get it from one of these. Uh, was it the immediate bonus from Stonehenge? Was it that? Was it that? No, I don't think I've got anything that gave me a culture. So, yeah. Unless I've missed it, let me know in the chat. What am I missing? Where did I get that culture from? Was it, was it the forum? Pay two different basic resources to get it? You got the culture from Stonehenge. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I, so I have used it this turn. Build a wonder section, paying two fewer production. If you do, gain one culture. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, th I think I did. I think I used that to start building this for one. Uh, and that got me the culture. Does it have a discount? Yeah, it has a discount of two. So you're saying that I spent three for it. If I spent three for that, then I've got two spare. Which would be great. But yeah, I you can probably go back and rewind. <laughs> so yeah, Stonehenge is... It's a discount of two fewer production. So I, I thought I'd only paid one for that. Uh, it's going to be tricky for me to go back and work out how many I should have. I mean, I should have two, three, four, one. Yeah, no, I think we're right. I think I had four production this turn. One was to build the Great Wall using Stonehenge's discount. And three was to take the pyramids. Oh, no, it was two to take the pyramids, wasn't it? Uh, okay, apparently I spent three. So there you go. I'm going to fix it. Thank you, Mo, for keeping an eye on me. Um, but according to Mo, I spent three resources to start building the Great Wall and I should have only spent one, which means I have two, res uh, two production left. Um, I'll go back later and I'll watch the video. Not that I don't believe you, but I thought I'd only spent one. So we got these two. What are we going to do with these two? We could buy a temple. Yeah, let's do it. Let's spend some of this gold. So it's two of these, plus this one, plus gold as a wild card, for four, to build a temple. There you go. That's going to get me lots of culture. Okay, and then we're done. We are definitely now done. So, phase three. Let's get rid of all them, and then let's deal some new ones out. So we've got a temple, which we knew was coming. Mathematics with a great library. Uh, a fort, a mine, the apothecary, and the other fort. Now, the discard part, the, the deck is empty, but you do not reshuffle your discards until you need to, until you need to draw a card. Uh, Evan is here, saw the Kickstarter is live. Does anybody know whether or not backing without a pledge will give you access? I'm not sure. Um, and Johnny's saying, I got uh, I got the culture from Stonehenge. Yes, thank you. I thought I, thought I did that. Uh, yeah, I can't answer that question, Evan. Um, probably best asking that on the Kickstarter. I don't know if anybody from Funforge is here. Uh, yeah, if they are, hello. Thank you for joining in. But they're probably busy running the Kickstarter right now. Done that display. Uh, so lots of cards were taken from the display, so nothing gets discarded. We are now in Age 2. Look, the Age 2 card is there. So we get some new fancy cards. We have Machu Picchu. Uh, we have the Printing Press. We have the Hagia Sophia, and we have Notre Dame. There's lots of wonders in this game. Right, okay, over to the Automa. Uh, you finished the Great Library and you got the culture. Ah, right, okay. So I finished the Great Library with Stonehenge. Anyway, I've probably cheated, but I'm not going to undo it now. So <laughs> apologies for making a mess of it, but it's roughly okay, I think. 
Um, okay, so Automa's go. And two cards are. Right, complete a wonder or require a new wonder with the lowest cost, pay two gold to repeat it. So basically that is pay two gold and it takes... Um, right, now, these all cost the same. So it goes for whichever is furthest away from the deck, which is these two. And now if it's tied, it goes in alphabetical order. So it takes the Hagia Sophia first. Uh, so it's done that, it's completed that, and then it takes the lowest cost building. There isn't a lowest cost building. Uh, we don't do that, and then it gains three gold. So a nice simple turn for the Automa. There you go there. Uh, the card wasn't taken from the top row, so that is removed. They slide down, that slides down. And there we go. Fairly quick Automa's turn. Let's just check the chat. Right, my go. Let's try and not make any mistakes this time. What are we going to activate? Now, this is good because this generates culture. Um, the Apothecary is also good, and the Forum's good. So I think we're going to activate top and right. Yeah, we're going to activate top and right. Okay, so we'll activate these. And the first thing we do is we gain a Culture, and we gain a Science, and we gain a Production. Let's have that one that's fallen out of the tray. Okay. Right. Next up, we haven't got any military. So the first section of each wonder you build each turn costs one fewer resource. So I could finish one of these. Oh, great library. Draw one card and use it. So at this point, I do reshuffle my deck. And we'll use the, um, we'll use the great library card. So I've not, I've not used the Great Library before. So draw one card and use it. Let's, is it fairly self-explanatory? I guess use it. I just get one science and put it in the discard pile. That's what I think that means. Um, archive a card to gain two matching basic resources. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna archive away the fort to gain two military. Okay, I'm just thinking of where we're going to conquer. I think we're now going to conquer this place here. So this is a free town. Uh, so two to move in there because that's the terrain defense value. I've conquered it with Ramesses, so I get two production. But I have to spend three gold because that's what's on the tile. Uh, and what do we have? We have either one culture or four matching basic resources. Wow, four. Oh, gosh. We could go absolute wonder-tastic here. Oh, I'll tell you what, I didn't do. I didn't put the Great Library on the board. Where is the Great Library? I put Stonehenge on the board. I didn't put the Great Library on the board. Let's put it there. Um, yeah, we could just take that and build millions of wonders. Let's do that. Let's take four basic matching resources. So four matching basic resources. Okay, right. What other abilities do we have that we haven't used? We've done that. Archive a card or pay two different basic resources to gain a culture. We could do that because I'm not really doing anything with this science. Yeah, so we'll pay the science and the production to gain a culture. So we've got two cultures, so we could play our second card. Yeah, we could play our second card. Um, Jonathan from the Hexy Beast is saying, do you find that not having flat edges on a hex tile solves the issue of them never being lined up right? Yes, I mean, the fact that these are wonky edges means that they actually stay together really well. You can I've actually moved this board twice while I was setting it up, and it actually moves quite well and it stays well together, so it's a good design. Um, yeah, whereas hexes tend to sort of fall apart now, fall apart and go everywhere. Didn't want to do that. Right, we're going to make use of this expedited construction. So the first section of each wonder you build each turn costs one fewer resource. So I can finish the Great Wall for two. That is finished. 
and when built, gain two military. Uh, that's finished. That goes on top of my deck, and I'm going to put the Great Wall. Where is the Great Wall? We're going to put that here. Okay, and then I'm also going to spend another two resources to finish the pyramids, uh, which I'm going to put here. Okay, uh, when built, gain a gold. That goes on top of my deck. Okay, there we go. Um, done that. Done that. Done that. I've used all of my cards, so we've still got these things left. Uh, we've already done our one conquering this turn. I can still conquer, but I'm going to need some gold to conquer there or there. So, yeah, because they, they both need three, but that's better than wasting it. So two military plus a gold as a wild card for three. Um, so this means I'm going to have to move three things in there. So that's one, two, three. So we've conquered this. And we get two gold or three science. Ah, now. That's interesting because that three science is going to go with this one. Yeah, we're going to take that. So I'll take the three science, but then I'll use that three science along with that one to buy sailing. And it goes on top of the deck. There you go. You can pay two science to draw the top card or just waste that one science. Okay. Not sure what you mean by that. Retracted the message. Okay, I saw it and then it disappeared. Uh, Triple L has just joined in. Joining late, no problem. Uh, you'll, you'll pick it up as we go along. I'm just working out what I'm going to do. I've got two production left, possibly a gold. I'm going to have a look at my cultural cards because I have two culture, which means I can actually put another one into play. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to spend two culture to put my second cultural policy into play. And what do we want to do? Don't want to do that one. That one's quite nice. The first time each turn you gain a Barbarian token. The first time you gain a Barbarian token each turn, gain both bonuses. Yeah? Or the first time you archive a card each turn, gain two gold. I think we're going to take that one. So. When you play your second cultural policy card, what happens is you stack them like that. Uh, and it triggers all of the immediate bonuses again. So I can gain two production and I can reinforce a card. Now what reinforcing a card does is basically one of these cards that has been activated and is going to get discarded. You just turn it like that and it, and it stays there. Um, so you can use it again. So yeah, I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep that one there. Right, I now have four resources, which is enough to start building another wonder. Yeah, wonder-tastic. I've, I've gone crazy with all the wonders here. Um, Notre Dame or Machu Picchu or Taj Mahal. Hmm. I don't want to take Notre Dame. <laughs> Doubles the amount of gold you have, but at the end of the turn, lose it all. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I'm going to take... Taj Mahal. Yeah, so we're going to take Taj Mahal. We're going to start building the Taj Mahal. Um, and you say, never mind, I got some science. Yeah, 38% funded on the Kickstarter. Cool, congratulations. It should fund. I mean, it's a cracking game from what I've seen so far, having just learned it. And the miniatures, obviously, it's nice miniatures. Everybody likes nice miniatures. But the game is perfectly playable without the miniatures. You can get the standard version that doesn't have miniatures in. Um, but yeah, the basic game that I've got has five civilizations in there. Um, I think the expansion is just more. I don't know how many more. I need to I need to take a look at it. Right, we're done. My turn is over. So all of these cards go to the discard. And we replenish. We have a knowledge, so we put pyramids on top of that. Great wall. Another knowledge. Another knowledge, so one of them stay, goes. I'll discard masonry. Okay. 
Boom, look at all those things. Have I built all of the wonders? Is that right? Pyramids, Great Wall, Great Library, Stonehenge. Yeah, I've got four wonders in play. I'm building a fifth one. And then the display. So no card was taken from the top row. So Machu Picchu goes. Everything slides down and we get three new cards. So we've got the Himeji Castle, Anthropology, and Alchemy. Okay, time for the Autumn's turn. Come on, Heracles, what are you going to do? Heracles is going to develop one cultural policy and, if possible, pay three gold to develop a second one. He does have three gold, so he basically develops two cultural policies. Now, cultural policies for the Autumn of Play don't do anything. They just you count how many they've got at the end of the game. So he's got two. Uh, if technological, no. Next one, move both explorers. Right, it's not going to do any explorer stuff, um, but it does take the lowest cost building. So this is interesting. Now, does anybody know the answer to this? Or if Matthew is in the chat? Um, oh, you can't get the standard version without the miniatures in the new Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. I wasn't sure. So the question in the chat is, it does say in the rule book that if it can't do the, the action, it gets two gold instead. But that's if it can't do the whole action. And this action is move both explorers. If possible, pay two gold to repeat this and then take the lowest cost building. So I think it just takes the lowest cost building. I don't think it gets the two gold. The lowest, it's if it couldn't get the building as well, then it would get two gold. So I think it takes the factory. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That, that's it. Quick turn. Done. Uh, Notre Dame disappears. Nobody wanted that. Uh, everything slides down and we get some more cards. Palace Guardhouse and the College. Right, my go. Time for a drink. How are we getting on? How do you think I'm doing? Each of the civilizations you play against is slightly different, but not much. There's only one card in there, which, which is different. Um, I thought they were going to play... Oh, no, no, it isn't just the one card, because it's the bottom bits as well. Yeah, so because Greek is economic, you're seeing a lot of the... You're not seeing much of the conquering side, whereas the, the Danish, I believe, yeah, they're, they're very um, uh, they're very attacky. Right, my go. What are we going to do here? We have all of this stuff. And I think... I think I'm going to activate the top and the, the left. Because then I get, I get Stonehenge and build some more wonders. Yeah. Uh, can you get the chips? It looks a bit crowdy with the miniatures. Yeah, so certainly when I set the game up, they, all the miniatures didn't fit on the capital. There was there was too many of them. Um, yeah, you can see over there, it, it looks absolutely uh, flooded with them. But it's okay, once you've started moving them around, it's fine. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go... I'm definitely going to go top. Now, where do we go now? I think we do go here. Right, okay. So I'm going to take a culture, a military, uh, and the basic resource, which right, so I'll come back to that in a minute. How many military do we need? We need three, we're gonna get three for that. So the basic resource, do we need science? Ooh, we don't have much in the way of science, so I'm gonna take a production. So that's the sailing activated. Okay, so here's, here's what we can do. I can archive a card to gain two military. So we're gonna archive away the fort to gain two military. Then we are going to use um, three military to move Ramses and two mates into here and defeat these barbarians. So we get two gold or three production. I'm going to take the two gold. Okay. Uh, yep. And that was the first time Ramses conquered a province this turn. So we get two... To production. Um, so we've done that. 
We've done that. We haven't done Stonehenge and we haven't done the Pyramid yet. Copy one effect of a Barbarian or Free City token that you previously claimed and then discard it. So I can basically get this again. Maybe I should have kept that science. Uh, oh, there's some good stuff here. Um, oh, and the first time you archive a card each turn, gain two gold. I forgot about that. I've got my burial tombs. Nobody reminded me. No, nobody reminded me. Yes, I spotted something that nobody else did. <laughs> Little successes. Um, we're going to get rid of this token for two extra gold. So that's why you keep the tokens, because pyramids will allow you to reuse them again a second time. So that's that done, that's that done. Stonehenge, build a wonder section, paying two fewer production. If you do, gain a culture. So we're going to... Oh, we've still got the Taj Mahal. Um, so we finished the Taj Mahal, which costs two. I gain a culture because of Stonehenge. Uh, Taj Mahal is finished. When built, gain three science. That card goes into my deck. Where are we going to put Taj Mahal? Let's put it there. You can only have one wonder per province and you can put one in your capital if you want to. Um, but you can't attack the other players' capitals. So it's, you do it there if there's nowhere else for you to put it, basically. Okay, we have one production left. We have loads of gold. We have two cultures, so we can't do another one. Uh, we have some science that we probably want to spend. So... Yeah, let's let's spend these three science with a gold as a science to take anthropology. So that's going to go on top of the deck. Um, what else do we want to do? We've got this one lone resource here. I don't think I'm going to do anything with this one. I mean, I could. I mean, I haven't bought any of these standard cards either. And this is what Mo was saying earlier on in the chat, is that if I don't buy these, I'm going to fill my deck with fancy stuff, but I'm not actually going to be able to get much in the way of resources. But I think I might be okay. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Miguel's just joined in. Hi, Miguel. Thank you for joining in. We are about halfway through-ish, I think. And getting to the point where I've built so many wonders, I've nowhere really to put them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just deciding whether it's worth just just ditching this, or do I want to buy something? I don't think I want to buy anything. Do we want to start building Hemeji Castle? Maybe. I mean, it is another wonder, and they are worth points at the end. Uh, and it is going to go. If I don't build Hemeji Castle, it is going to go because it will go to there on my turn and then it will go off. Well, it might do. It might not. I think we're going to leave it. So we're going to end our turn there. So I, I lose that. We then get rid of these. They go to the discard pile. Okay, and we replenish the gaps. So we have Anthropology with Taj Mahal. We have the Work Camp and now we shuffle and go back in. So just out of interest, how many people in the chat have already played the game? I know, Mo, you've definitely played it. Uh, and how many people are here to see it being played? Or how many people are here just to watch me play a game? Let me know in the chat, A, B or C. A, you've got the game. Um, B, you're interested in seeing how the game plays. Or C, you just want to watch me play a game. Which one of those is it? Okay, we have a new deck. And we carry on with some cards. There we go. And now the displays. So printing press goes, cards slide down, and we get the trebuchet and metal casting. Okay, so over to the Automa. The Automa is, aha, finally, the Automa is conquering. So conquers an adjacent province with the lowest cost. Right, that's two, that's two, that's two, that's four, and that's two. If it's tied, it will go for the one with the lowest terrain defense value. And then if it's still tied, I choose. So it's basically, it's conquering this one. 
Uh, if possible, pay two gold to conquer the next. So it will. It will conquer two provinces. And what it does is it moves in there with its leader uh, and then uh, one of its armies. So that goes in there. It gets the tokens. Okay. Uh, and it takes, um, it basically takes the gold. So one, two. There you go. It's got those tokens. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, we have B, 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 B and C, B, B and C, B and C, B and C, B and C. Excellent. Right. Oh, that's interesting. So it's only Mo that's played it before, really. Everybody else is here just to uh, just to see what's going on. Tamas is here as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. Peter's here. Cool. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining in on this Monday. I felt all day like it was a Friday. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and I still feel like it's a Friday. So anyway, it's done that. It's done that. It's not that. And then it gains three gold. Right, done. Easy AI turn. Back to me. Oh no, display. Those go. Shuffles down. Oh, three. We're in age three already. Remember what I said at the start, and I'm going to say it again, because some people have just joined in. There is a variant rule where you can include an extra age for a longer game. Um, there is the Renaissance age, which goes between two and three. I'm not using that in this video, but that is included in the game. It's some extra cards that would go in at this point. So we have the International Space Station uh, and we have Industrialization. Okay, right, my go. The game will end once this debt runs out and we finish that round and then play one more. So, how are we looking for points? That, that's what I'm thinking about now. No, let's not think about points. Let's just play, I mean, I'm certainly doing all right for Wonders. And it also gets points for gold at the end of the game. Let, let's just let's just play and see how we get on. We have lots of wonders here now. Oh, it's got to be this. It absolutely has to be this row, column. It's got to be that column. Oh, I want the temple, but I also want the Great Wall. I'm going to go with the temple. So there we go. That's what we've activated. Right. So first thing is culture. Second thing, production. That's it. That's my that's my basic stuff done. Wow. How am I archiving a card? That. Right. First thing I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use these tokens to mark which abilities I've used because I forget. So we're going to use this. Draw one card and use it. It's the apothecary. Archive a card to gain two basic, uh, two matching basic resources. Let's archive the work camp to gain two military. Because we need to go military in order for Ramses' ability to work. The first time we archive a card each turn, gain two gold. So that's been used. That's been used. Right. Then copy the bonus of one of your cultural policies which is the first time you archive a card each turn gain two gold it says one of your cultural policies hmm copy the bonus of one of your cultural policies what does that mean is that in the rule book does it mean does it mean the immediate ability so there's nothing in the there's nothing in the back of the rule book that says what a bonus is. We'll we'll try and fix this. Any any comments I've got on this, I'm going to feed back because um, there's a few things that they can tweak for the next printing. There is yeah, it says copy the bonus of one of your cultural policies, and I'm looking at the cultural policies, and nothing says bonus. There is the one-off effect, and there is the ongoing effect, and it's a shame that Matthew's not in the chat, but Mohammed is here. Uh, yes, it's the bonus immediate ability. Right, okay. So it's the one-off effect, not the ongoing effect. Okay. So I don't get two gold. Instead, I get, I'll get two production. That's fine. I trust you on that one. I assume you know. Uh, so we've used that. Right, now I'm going to archive a card and take a basic building. So we're going to archive... Oh... I think I can archive the work camp. And if you archive a card that's got a knowledge thing attached to it, 
That didn't happen to me earlier on. Um, if you archive a card that has a knowledge card attached, the knowledge card is discarded. Which makes sense. Okay, so that gets discarded. Um, and it was archive a card and take one basic building. So we're going to take... Uh, we are going to take the archery range. It's going to go on top of the deck. Okay, so we've used that. Copy the effect of a barbarian or free city token that you've previously claimed and then discarded. And then discard it. And I'm going to take that one. We're going to discard it for a culture. Look at this. Not for culture. Wow. Um, so we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Wow. We've done all of that. Now we've got stuff to do here. So uh, we've got two military. Is two military going to be enough to get anywhere? Now you're going to see something soon. You're going to think, well, wait a minute. Paul's running out of dudes. Uh, and yes, he is. But you can create outposts. And that gets people back. So as well as um, as well as the figures in the game, there's there's little. These are really good. The moulding on these is fantastic. These are probably what I'm going to paint next, actually. Um, yeah. Just checking. Have I forgotten to put a wonder in play? I think I have. Hagia Sophia. I forgot to put that in play. Okay. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these tokens on them when they come out <laughs> so that hopefully I won't forget. Yeah, right. Okay. So two military. What can I do with two military? Uh, I need four to get into there, four to get into there, two and three production to get into there. Oh, let's do that. Yeah, let's totally do that. So two military sends Ramesses into here with one of these and I need to give in three production which I will to take this and I get one culture or three matching basic resources um it was in the FAQ okay cool right yes so there's some FAQ for the game I should have looked that up actually um three matching basic resources or a culture I think I'm going to go down the culture route we're going to try and get it yeah there you go so that's that done We've got nothing left. We do have gold. And remember, we can always use gold as a wild card. I've not bought anything at all from here. Is that bad? Well, no, I guess. I mean, gold isn't worth anything at the end. So I should probably spend it. Should we start building the International Space Station? Hmm. Let's wait for Stonehenge to come out. Because as we all know, Stonehenge is useful for building the International Space Station. Because that's still going to be there. Yeah, that is totally going to be there. Uh, well, we've not really gone down the knowledge route, uh, the science route. We don't really have much in the way of science. Okay, so let's spend three culture and let's get our third cultural policy card. So once per turn, instead of activating a work camp, you may archive it to gain a culture. There's a picture of a cat. The first time you gain a barbarian token each turn, gain both bonuses. Copy the effect of a knowledge card you activated this turn. Let's do that. So I've spent me three. I'm going to put into play guilds. So when it comes in, I can archive a card, reinforce a card, and gain two production. So we're going to archive a card. Uh, we are going to reinforce a card. Yep. Yeah. Do you reinforce both of them or just one? Reinforce. If you reinforce a card that has a knowledge card attack, the knowledge card is discarded. Okay, so it just reinforces that one. Let's reinforce the pyramids. No, let's reinforce the great library. Oh, no, pyramids. Okay, and then gain two production. Okay, so I'm probably going to use my production now. And then copy the effect of a knowledge card that you activated this turn, which is that one, which allows me to copy the bonus of one of my cultural policies, which I will use to gain two production. Right, so now all of a sudden I've got four production, and I can use that to buy with a gold. I'm going to start building the International Space Station. <laughs> awesome source. 
Right. Now we're done. Am I right in thinking that gold isn't worth anything? Yeah, play a culture and get all the bonuses again. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, if gold isn't worth anything at the end of the game to me, I might just spend it now to buy another knowledge card. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to spend four gold as if it was science. And we're going to take metal casting. It's going to go on top of the deck. Right, we're done. What a mess we've made. So this all gets discarded. Except for the pyramids, because I reinforced it. They go to my discard pile. Gold is a tiebreaker at the end of the game. Tiebreaker? Nah. I'm going to I'm gonna pummel him into the ground. Metal casting with archery. Work camp. Four. I've still got some basic cards in here. Sailing with library. Forum. Mathematics. Look at all these knowledge cards now. Okay, gonna have to reshuffle. There we go. Right, okay. Display. Cards were taken from both rows, so we just slide down and refill. We have the Kremlin and we have uh, Cristo Redento. Okay, so um, now it's the Autumn. We have. Conquer an adjacent province with the lowest cost, pay two gold to do it again. Yep. So where is it going to conquer now? This costs two. Ah, now this costs four, but this, this actually costs five. Because this is the attacking other people rules. Uh, if the leader is there, that counts as two defense, and other ones count as one. So it's going to go there first, and then there. So the first one, and then the second one, and it gets these two bonuses. So it gets two gold, basically. Uh, if economic, which it is, move the explorers, yada, 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 it doesn't. There's no explorers left. Well, there are, but they're not doing anything. The explorers have all explored. They can retire, sit at home and play PlayStation 5. Uh, topical joke, see, I do keep an eye on the news. I've never been a console person. I'm just trying to get down with the cool kids. Take the knowledge card with the highest cost. If possible, pay two gold to take the next one. Well, there's only one knowledge card. so It takes that one uh, and then it doesn't take the next one. And that's it. That's it's go done. So that card goes, we slide down, and we get some new cards. Fertilizer and the Statue of Liberty. You can't not say fertilizer without a West Country accent. It's just it's the rules. Right, what's next? My go. Now, look at this. We're activating a lot of stuff here. Yeah. Wow. Kind of want to activate Stonehenge. But do we do column or row? Hmm. Kind of also want to do the, uh, the metal casting. And we also want to conquer this to take some points off my opponent. But then if we do, he's just, he's just going to conquer me back. So uh, we are getting desperately short on people now. I think we've still got a bit more fight left in us, but we definitely want to build this International Space Station. Um, it's really odd because you put, you put these tokens on the board. So it's like I'm putting an International Space Station here in the middle of the forest. Um, We need four more culture. Uh, sorry, we need two more culture to give us four. So yeah, we can we can do this. I think it's just what we're going to activate. Uh, okay, so we're going to activate the left column and then the middle row. So I get one. Two science, two military. Okay, that's it for resources. Okay. Uh, oh, and one basic resource. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not. No, 
yeah, one basic resource will be uh, uh, ooh, science. OK. Um, same as the word tractor. Yes. <laughs> tractor and fertilizer. Um, OK, so we have gained the basic resources from the sailing. We have gained a basic resource from the sailing. I am then going to. Oh, I need, I need three production, which I can get. Okay, so we're going to use the pyramids to duplicate this. It's a free city token. It says free city token. I think it says free town in the rule book. I'll check that later. Might have a slight inconsistency there. Uh, again, all of this I'll feed back to them, so hopefully they can fix it in the next version, if it is indeed a problem. Um, so yeah, we're going to basically take three matching basic resources, which is going to be production. One, two, three. We then use the ability of Stonehenge to build this for three. One, two, three. Um, when built, gain three gold. One, two, three. So that's built. That goes on top of my deck. And the International Space Station is going there. Why not? Uh, right. We've still got other things to do. Um, we've got two military and we need four. That's fine because we've got gold. Uh, yeah, we have gold. Am I going to be able to do this? Because I'm going to need four military, which means I need to move four units in. This one is spare and this one is spare. So I, I don't have four units. So we're going to have to build an outpost first. So I'm going to have to spend one military you, one military action thing to move this one into here. And at that point, once you've got three in an area, you can take them all out and replace them with an outpost, which has got three defence. They then go into there. I do need, however, three more military. Um, how am I going to get three more military? I mean, I've got the gold. Might have to use the gold. Yeah, I think we're going to have to use the gold, aren't we? So one military plus three gold is four military to basically move this. We'll move to here. So that's four. No, we'll move to here. Yeah, so that's four. So we've moved in there. Charge. There you go. So we're all in. Uh, and we get either two production or a gold. I'll take two production tokens. Thank you. Uh, and the first time that I conquered a province this turn, I get two production. Okay. And then if you conquered at least one province this turn, gain a culture, which I did. Uh, and then copy the effect of a knowledge card that you activated this turn to gain a culture. Right then, nice. What are we going to do with all of this production? Do we start building another wonder? I think we might. So one, two, three, four and a gold. To start building. Um... Yeah, let's build Cristo Redenta. Let's, let's, let's go for it. Let's try and get the whole culture, full culture thing out. So there we go. That's that done. Um, now, we've got full culture here, so I'm actually going to spend it. And we are going to get our fourth culture card. Um, and I will play that. I will play uh, Manumission. Wasn't that a nightclub in Manchester? Yeah, I think it was. So I gain a gold. I archive a card, which will be this. Um, I reinforce a card, which will be this, which means that gets discarded. And I gain two production. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> which I'm probably not going to do anything with. Uh, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Yeah, I mean, I could buy one of the basic cards. 
But at this point, is it worth it? Go on, let's buy it. Let's buy an archery range. No, let's not buy an archery range. No, let's not buy an archery range. Let's spend a gold and make it three and buy a workshop. Because we know it's going to come out. Right, we've got three science. Um, yeah, sure. Three science plus two gold. i got no gold left. We'll buy fertilizer. There you go. Dan's here in the chat. Hi, Dan. Thank you very much for joining in. Late to the party. Yes. You can rewind and watch again. Um, but we are a couple of turns away from finishing. Um, that is it. You can see how the go how the turns get exponentially longer the more you the more stuff you can do. Uh, I said I was going to put some stuff on, didn't I? That should be there. Yeah. Okay. So we will do the display. Uh, sorry, not the display. We'll do my city first. So fertilizer with the workshop, international space station, great library, anthropology with the temple. And a work camp right okay so now we do this now we do the display that slides down yeah okay so we're going to have one more turn left each right okay automa player so move the explorers it doesn't do that take the lowest cost building they're both four so it takes the one furthest away and then it takes the one in alphabetical order if economic yes uh, taking all production, but yeah, so it takes two gold um, and it, we're going to shuffle the discard pile back into the deck. Okay. And then it takes the next lowest cost building, which is that one. Oh, it's taken loads of buildings. So that all gets shuffled in. And that is the deck empty. So the end of the game has been triggered. We finished that round, which is the end of that round is now. Um, and we get one more turn each. So this is my last turn of the game. Uh, I'm not going to get the five culture. Oh, I might. Because if I can build Cristo Redenta, that's three culture. Stonehenge and the temple is going to be five. Yes, I can do it. So we're definitely activating Stonehenge and the temple. Which means we're also activating the Great Library. Now, which other ones do we want to do? Do we want to do any more battling? I mean, we can... It's only really an extra point. Oh, we could go down. Look at all this. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, International Space Station. Draw five cards and use two of them. Wow. No, I think we want to do this. Fertilizer with the workshop. A fertilized workshop. Oh, and once per turn, instead of activating a work camp, you may archive it to gain a culture. Okay, we got an overload of culture. Um, which means I don't actually need, oh no, it's alright, I've done it. Yeah, no, it's fine. Three production there. Uh, one culture from there. And three military from there. Okay. Right. So the first thing is I'm going to activate the ability of Stonehenge to spend the three production complete the Cristo Redentor, which we're going to put here. And we're going to remove them to build an outpost because we can. You've only got two outposts, by the way, so you do need to be using them carefully. Um, and when built, gain three culture. Goes on my deck. I like to make the temple for the culture. Gain the bonus, uh, copy the bonus of one of your cultural policies. I will gain two production. No, do I need anything? Do we really need to do it? Do we need production? I'm not going to be able to build another wonder, so uh, I'll just gain gold. Oh no, actually I might. Yes, I might. So I'll gain the two production because I am now going to spend five culture and we are going to play my fifth card, so expansion, which means I take two production, I reinforce a card, which doesn't really matter, I archive a card, which doesn't really matter, um, I gain a gold, and I take a basic building, which doesn't really matter. Okay, but I've got all my five cultural policies out. Wow. 
Okay, so we're going on the attack. We spend three military plus a gold as four military to move into there with these three. And we take on these barbarians. Oh, I'll tell you what, you know, should we attack him instead? No, he needs five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't have five. Okay, we'll just go beating up the barbarians instead. Um, one gold or move each explorer. We'll take a gold. Okay. Oh, great library. Draw one card and use it. It's two production. Nice. Uh, Ramesses has just conquered a place for the first time, which is two production. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One short of building another wonder. Can I squeeze an extra resource out somewhere? I don't think I can. Uh, Kickstarter campaign is half financed. Cool. That's good. Um... Yeah, I think. Oh, no, hang on. First time at each turn you gain a barbarian token, gain its bonuses, gain both bonuses. Ah, the second one is just moving explorers. Which, when there's nothing left to explore, is fairly meaningless. So I think. I mean, I've got these eight resources. I don't think there's anything I can do with them. I was hoping to just get one more. Yeah. Not missed anything ever? Nope. I don't think I've missed anything. So I think that's it. I think that is my go over. I'm not going to bother doing the city stuff. Um, because, yeah, it's over for me. So the AI, last two cards. Let's see what it can do and then we'll add up the scores. So it develops a cultural policy and spends three gold to develop another one. So it develops two more. Uh, and then it takes the lowest cost building, which there isn't one, so it gets two gold. And there we go. Right, scoring time. Now there is a scoring board included in the game. So we're going to put this here. And we're going to use blue for me and we're going to use red for them. So scoring is uh, two points per wonder card. So you basically, you go through your deck, find out what you've built. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wonders. Did I put them all on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I forgot one. Oops. What did we forget? Pyramids, Great Library, Stonehenge. Oh no, Stonehenge, I did. So seven wonders, that's 14 points. Uh, and the Greeks, they got one, two. Pathetic, mate. Two wonders. Four points. So I got three points for the majority bonus. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, next up is uh, cultural policies. Well, I got all five of mine out, which is 10 points. So 27, and then another three for having the most. It got four cultural policies out, which is eight points, putting it on 12. Knowledge cards. Didn't do so well on knowledge cards, not including um, your initial one that you start with. So basically knowledge cards that you bought, one, Two, three, four, five, six. So that's six points. Uh, and it got. No, it's not them. Where's its cards? Okay, what have I done here? Where have I put its cards? There. Uh, one. Did it only get one? Wow. It played terribly. Uh, so I get another three points for having the most. And then owned provinces. Uh, I got one, two, three, four, five, no. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine. Put me on to 48. And then three, because I've got the most. So 49, 50, 51. That's odd, there's no 50. Yeah, that's very odd. <laughs> um, and matey boy's got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Did I add my three on? I don't think I did, did I? Yeah, I did. I added my three on. And then it gets one point for every uh, three gold, I think. But yeah, it's done really badly. One, two, three... 
for five points. Well, if I've done the scoring right, that is an astonishing loss for the other player. Um, I scored 51 and it scored 22. So I think there are ways you can make it more difficult. I know Matthew mentioned some advanced action cards this afternoon, and I think I got the rules right. Thank you very much to everybody for helping me with the rules in the chat, but that seemed to go quite well. I do have the advantage of having played it earlier on today and getting some advice and tips from people. So thank you very much for those who gave me the tips and advice. But I seem to get into a good cycle of producing resources, building wonders. I built a lot of wonders in this game. I mean, seven, seven wonders. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a lot. Um, curious to see if it's harder against an aggressive opponent. Yeah, the, my opponent, that seemed to be a very easy one. It was, the, it was an economic opponent. It really wasn't doing much in the way of conquering. I found the exploration a little unusual in the a third of the way through the game. These explorers may as well have been taken off the board um, because, you know, they, they, they did lots of exploring. The AI seems to explore very quickly. A lot of them are, you know, explore a lot. Um, but there you go. So this video was intended to show you how the game plays because the rules for the solo game are exactly the same as the rules for the multiplayer game apart from you running a solo player. So everything you saw from my side, those rules don't change. They are exactly the same. You take your turn, you activate your city. If you like that, um, then yeah, consider checking out the, the Kickstarter campaign. So this video is to give you an idea of, of how it plays to see if it's a game that you would be interested in. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm here for, really, to teach you how to play the game. I may be doing a multiplayer game of this over the weekend. Not quite sure. Uh, I got a message earlier on from Jeremy Howard, and we're going to try and make it work this weekend if we can. Uh, but both of us have got a lot of other stuff on. So, yes, we will see. Uh, Jonathan say, it's because I'm a good gamer, which is why I did well. Yeah, I've been playing games a long time. Maybe maybe that that is part of it. Um, and the fact that, as I say, I, I played it earlier on this afternoon, and I learned a lot from that play. I kind of worked out what I was going to do in the way that I was going to do things. Anyway, right, I'm going to go downstairs and get some dinner. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the content that I create, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, other than that, I will be back later in the week. I've got a whole bunch more live streams later in the week. I think I've got one tomorrow, one on Wednesday, maybe two on Wednesday. I think I've got one or two on Thursday, and then I've got one or two on Friday as well. So there's going to be a lot of content uh, coming to this channel uh, later on and possibly possibly another playthrough of this. If I don't do another multiplayer playthrough, if I don't do a multiplayer playthrough of this soon, I'm pretty sure I will be doing a multiplayer playthrough of this once lockdown is over and we can actually get people uh, back round to our houses because I would like to see how this plays multiplayer. Anyway, thank you very much to everybody for joining in and keeping me company in the chat. I hope you found it useful. Um, yeah, don't forget to click on the little thumb, click on the little bell, and please leave me a comment. I know you've been watching live, but if you can pop, pop a comment on the video as well, that really helps the algorithm uh, and shares it with other people. Other than that, let's go and have a look at how the Kickstarter campaign is going. And um, yeah, take care, everybody. And I will see you all next time. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppers LLC.